do now for 11.2, um, angle FGH is 126 degrees. This is the exterior angle. Angle HGJ is right here. This is adjacent to the exterior angle, which means angle H and angle J are what we call remote angles since they're interior but non-adjacent to the exterior angle. We have this uh, formula called the remote exterior angle formula that says that angle H plus angle J has to equal the exterior angle. So when I combine together angle H and angle J, I get 11X plus 16, and that's going to equal the exterior angle, which is 126. Do all your math, you get X equals 10. When I plug it back in, I get 59 degrees for angle H, and I get 67 degrees for angle J, and when you add those together, you get 126. If it's a scalene triangle, or isosceles, or equilateral, okay, that's what it means when you want to classify by sides. Well, to figure out what it is, that means I have to figure out how long each side length is. So first thing I need to do to classify by sides, I need to find the distance. I need to find the length of all sides. So to find the length of each side, that's going to be the distance form. And the distance form is equal to the square root of. We take the x values and subtract them, square that answer. We take the y values, subtract them, and square that answer, and then take the square root. So it's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So... Let's do SM first on the distance from S to M. This is square root of we're just going to plug things into the formula. So I'm going to just go with the M, make that my x1, y1, and the S can be my x2, y2. So it's x2 minus x1, so x2 is going to be 1, 2 is going to be my x1, so it's going to be 2 minus 1. Do the same thing with my y's, y2 is going to be 3, y1 is going to be 0, so it's going to be 3 minus 0. Two minus one is one, so I got one squared plus Three minus zero is three, so three squared. So that's gonna be the square root of one plus nine, which gets me the square root of 10. Square root of 10 is a perfect, is not a perfect square, and the only multiples of 10 are five and two. Well, the square root of five and the square root of two are not perfect squares either. So in simplest radical form, the distance from S to M is gonna be the square root of 10. Continue that process for QM, and I get the distance from Q to M is the square root of 10. And when I try to find S to Q, I end up with the square root of 20. Well, we just so happen can take the square root of 20. We know that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 20 is actually two square roots of five. Well, when I look at this, SM and QM are equal. That's it, thank you. They're the same length. 
So what that means is line segment SM is congruent to line segment QM. That's two congruent sides, which means this triangle is an isosceles triangle. So that takes care of the first part of this. It wanted us to classify by sides. But now if we want to classify by angles, we need to look at the slopes. of each side. Now some of you find your slopes by doing rise over run from the graph and that's perfectly acceptable. Some of you find your slopes by using the slope formula. That is also completely acceptable. It just depends on who you are. So slope formula, if we want to use it, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I want to find the slope of SM, y2 minus y1, so that's 3 minus 0 on top, x2 minus x1, on the bottom we get 1 minus 2, which actually becomes negative 2. So what happens is the slope from S to M is a negative 3 over 1. If we follow the same suit and we use the same formula to find the slope of every other side, the slope from Q to M is 1 over 3, and the slope of QS is equal to 4 over 2, which just gets me 2. Well, if I look at these two slopes, SM and QM, one is a negative 3 over 1, and the other is a positive 1 over 3. So what's the difference is? Well, 3 over 1 and 1 over 3, they're flipped, and one's a negative and one's a positive. That means that SM, line segment SM, is perpendicular to line segment QM. Since they're perpendicular, that means that angle SMQ equals 90 degrees, which means we have a right triangle. So this is called an isosceles right triangle. Now pause the video and I want you to try this triangle on your own. So again, if we want to classify by sides, we need to find the length of each side using the distance formula. So let's do A to B first. This would be my x1, y1, x2, y2. So distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1, so that's going to be 3 minus negative 2, so it's going to be 3 plus 2 squared, plus negative 1 minus 5 squared. So this is a to b, I'm going to write a to b here. So that's going to be the square root of 3 plus 2 is 5, so that's going to be 5 squared plus negative 6 squared, which gets you the square root of 25 
plus 36, which is the square root of 61. 61 is a prime number. So a to b equals the square root of 61. That's as simple as it gets. When I do all my math, b to c is also the square root of 61. And c to a is equal to the square root of 2. We just so happen to have two congruent sides. Line segment AB is congruent to line segment BC, so this triangle is isosceles. Now, if I want to classify by angles. We have to check to see if there's any opposite reciprocal slopes like in the last problem. So I have to do my slopes. So let's find the slope of AB first. Y2 minus Y1. Negative 1 minus 5 x2 minus x1, that's going to be 3 minus negative 2, which is 3 plus 2. I get negative 6 over 5. So that's the slope from A to B. If I find the slope from B to C using the formula, I get negative 5 over 6. And I find the slope of C to A or A to C, I get 1. Well, none of these, negative 6 over 5 and five over, negative 5 over 6, the fractions are flipped, but they're both negative, so those are not opposite reciprocal slopes. So the slopes really tell me nothing. All I can say is that this is not a right triangle. It could be a twos, it could be acute, it appears to be acute, but we don't know. So the only thing I can say here is it's not a right triangle.